Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My book, Beyond the Lines, is about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness, which is what this show is all about. My special guest today is a super talented musician and the owner and CEO of Hawaii Music Works. He is Mark Santos, and today we are going beyond music. Hey, Mark, thanks for joining me on the show today. Thanks for having me. Long time no see, I miss you. I miss you too, we're too busy. <laughs> Now, Mark, tell me about your early years growing up. Early years, let's see. Well, you know, I moved around a lot because my dad was in the military. Okay. And uh, he was tough because he's a retired West Pointer too, you know. So, <laughs> uh, and you know, you always kid me about my hair. Yeah. You know, I, I had a crew cut until I was like 11 years old. Really? So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but we moved around a lot, all over the place and from the military. But I, I think that was good because it exposed me to a lot of different cultures and things. And so that was great. Um, but then uh, when I started high school, we came back. And uh, so I went to Iolani. And uh, uh, that's where uh, I really got involved in music, I mean, heavily in high school. So I was in, uh, I was in jazz band. I was in uh, marching band. And... Um, after that, um, I went. Uh, I decided because I moved around so much, you know, when I was younger, being in the military, I mean, military kids, they really have it rough because they make friends and then they lose their friends because they have to move to a new place and start all over again. So when I, went, uh, when I graduated from high school, I said, I just want to stay here. And um, fortunately, back in the 80s, oh, nine, nine, everybody knows how old I am. Uh, <laughs> back in the 80s. <laughs> um, uh, the business school is really hopping over at, at the University of Hawaii. So I wanted to, I wanted to major in business and marketing. That's what I did at the University of Hawaii. So nice, uh, very nice. Yeah. No, and then I know that you played tennis uh, when you're in high school as well, right? Yes, I did. Good thing you weren't my coach. I would have been beat <laughs> up. <by that>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Played tennis. I actually started that when I was in, living in California when I was younger. So Great. My uncle got started in San Jose. So, so how, how young were you, Mark, when you started uh, getting interested in music? Oh, you know, I can honestly say um, I remember, you know how things stick in your mind yeah. when you're really young. So I remember when I was like, I think I was four. Wow. Um, for Christmas, my parents got me my first phonograph. So I crawled underneath, and then they hadn't wrapped it yet. So I crawled under the dining room table, and I was peeling off the plastic. <laughs> and they caught me because they heard, you heard that. But uh, yeah, as young as that. And even, you know, so back then, I liked music, and then I knew what I liked. I mean, you know, listening to the Beatles, listening to, uh, oh, and my dad, I mean, he had this big record collection. So I'd listen to everything from, you know, the Beatles to Herb Alpert to Burt Bacharach to Dionne Warwick, you know. Uh, Trini Lopez, uh, was at least Jose Feliciano, everything. So it was that's really a, great. That's such a wide spectrum right there that you just mentioned. And and Mark, I know <laughs> I know your family very well. You know your wife Dale and your two kids uh, Kira and Esri. I want to ask you, does your wife Dale play music too? Yeah, she plays the iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I found, uh, when we were dating, yeah. uh, I found an acoustic guitar in her room. And I was like, whose guitar is it? She says, it's mine. And I go, can you play something for me? She said, no. <laughs> and she has never, ever played it for me, ever. But it's here at the studio. Yeah, so I use it for teaching. <laughs> I, can, I can hear her saying that to you. <laughs> among other things <laughs> now mark you know you're i mean you have such an amazing family and you're obviously your two daughters a lot of people who know them they just know that they are ultra talented musicians i mean how how's kira and esri doing doing now um yeah they're doing good i can't believe they're adults they're actually yeah. adults, <laughs> adults. 
I mean, it's you and me about what, 30 years old now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, they're doing good and uh, pursuing that their original music uh, with their um, good friend, our family friend, Peyton, who's in the, in the band, the drummer. Yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> all by himself, the only guy. Um, but um, they've actually uh, come and joined the business. This is really truly a family business, our music studio. Great. And I really like that. Really like that because they bring their enthusiasm, their passion, and their experience of uh, playing uh, to the teaching front with our students. Oh, I love hearing that. And Mark, I want to, I want you to share when and why did you start Hawaii Music Works? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, after, um, in the mid eighties, I got connected with, um, I, I won't say the, the name of the corporation, but, um, I worked for a long time for the largest music corporation of the world. <laughs> it really is. And I had to move to Los Angeles. So I worked for them for a long time, uh, being a touring musical artist and a clinician. But, um, when I got, uh, when Dale and I got married, and uh, right before we came back, my last stint with that corporation was music education. So, um, and then I discovered, you know, I really enjoyed it. I really got a high off of teaching people, especially young people. It was really rewarding. I really, I really found it fulfilling. So instead of really concentrating being a performer, which I really thought I wanted to be all my life, I decided I wanted to be a music educator. And when I came back, I decided when I retire, I'm going to start my own school. So that's what happened. Oh, I love hearing that, Mark. And, you know, Mark, we have a, a short video that we're going to play right now, if we can roll that about Hawaii Music Works. Mark, as we saw there, I mean, you're making such an amazing impact with countless uh, kids in our community. Why do you love teaching music so much? Um, no, there's all kinds of reasons. Oh, let me, I want to say something though about that film clip. In the middle of the clip, there's a little girl who's playing piano. Yep. And Kira was teaching. And then she made a mistake and then she started to laugh. Yeah. Yeah. And then she goes back. She went to try it again. And then she finished it, and then Kira said, you know, good job. And she said, no, I didn't. And I think that's really interesting, and, and it shows, like, you know, what we try to do with our students because she's not afraid to make a mistake. She can laugh at herself and, you know, just take it as, like, oh, I messed up. Let me try it again because I learned from my mistakes, right? Then she gets to the end, and Kira says, great job. And she says, no, I didn't because she's not satisfied with what she did, and she wants to she knows that she wants to do it again, do it better, because she knows she can. Yeah. So I really, I really like that clip right there. No, you guys, I mean, what you're doing, it's, it's so amazing. And I, I feel so happy to 
showcase, you know, Hawaii music works and you, because I mean, I know that you're in demand with a lot of these private and group lessons. And at the end, I mean, there's a lot of uh, students that you end up connecting with Hard Rock Cafe, right? Oh yeah, because I, I, you know, we really think it's important that you take what you learn, apply it, you know, and showcase it, share it with people. Because music is about sharing; it's a social aspect, right? And then be, being able to offer them a nice venue, a real professional venue with a real stage, real lights, so they know what it's what it feels like to be a real professional musician. Well, let's let's talk about that ultra popular band before MK. Okay, and you know, two of your two daughters are part of MK before, and I want to know. Well, people, a lot of people knew that they were the young kids who would play incredibly amazing Journey songs, but how did it all begin with them? Yeah, that's a funny thing because everybody, everybody thinks that you know, I made them do it. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm Joe Jackson or something. Yeah. So, uh, what, what happened was, uh, you know, we started the school and they were, they were really young when I started the school. Um, and, you know, I'm teaching and I actually had another group of students that uh, I was working with, actually two or three groups. And um, they were older, of course, you know, teens, but the girls are watching the older students and then they actually ask, can I start piano? Can I learn, you know, piano? So they both started in piano. But I sent them to my instructors because it's impossible for a parent to teach their own child. It just uh, doesn't work. Yeah. You know that. So my teachers, actually, I, I owe a lot to my teachers for sending a good foundation. And then uh, as they, um, yeah, as they progressed, I mean, they started piano when they're four. They added guitar when they're around seven. Ezri added the bass when she got a little bit, oh no, just by maybe eight years old. And then uh, in vocals in there and too. So everything is them. They wanted to do it just because they were exposed to it. Yeah, and then you became, you know, their mentor and manager. And I wanna know why, why did they become so successful as a band? Um, oh, a lot of fastest i mean success you know how do you measure success and what you know what does somebody mean by success uh and the first thing i was like success is just if you can do something and be good at it because you are passionate about it and you enjoy it then you can be fortunate and then really fortunate if it turns out to be something that you can do as a profession yeah a lot no. of people get stuck in jobs and they don't like what they're doing you know and i can tell so, that you love it i mean they all love it, and and it just really trans transfers to the students that they work with. Yeah, that's really important to us. We want to make sure that whoever is teaching here transfers their passion, their love of music, you know, and is you know, just not going through the motions. You know, play this scale for me. You know, yeah. <laughs> just get some wrong notes there. You know, that's just you know that's just barely part of it. You know, it's. It, it's, it's expressing yourself through your music. Yeah, and it's all about having fun uh, in, in learning music. Yes, definitely, because you don't want to learn something you're not enjoying. Right? Exactly. So. Mark, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond music, okay? Okay. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Mark Santos. We will be back in 60 seconds. I'm Stan Osterman, Stan the Energy Man, every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. If you're really interested in finding out what's going on in energy, especially here in Hawaii, but also all the way around the world, and especially if it has to do with hydrogen, look into Stan the Energy Man every Friday, 12 o'clock, Think Tech Hawaii. Be there. Aloha.
Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is a super talented musician and the owner of Hawaii Music Works. He is Mark Santos, and today we are going beyond music. Mark, I want to ask you one more thing about MK. Uh, they were they were offered um, by Sony Japan to have a contract, and they turned them down. What what was the reasoning behind that? Yeah, um, I had nothing to do with that. That's totally them. And it's funny because that even relates back to an earlier time when they were younger. They did get a Disney offer also when they were younger. And they turned down the Disney thing and the Sony thing for the same reasons. And at two different age, when they're in two different ages. And really the thing is, they discovered as they were going through it that it was probably going to make them have to do something or be something that they weren't. And they didn't want to actually pursue music and not be themselves or be able to express themselves uh, in, 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 for real. So that's why they turned down both offers. No, that's very admirable of them because, you know, most bands will just be like, yes, we'll do it. And yes, we'll, you know, transform in, into whatever you want. But you know, for them to really do what they want and play the music that they want and the look that they wanted to have, I mean, that is so amazing. And then Mari left the band and now they are known as Close the Distance. Now, what's the latest updates with Close the Distance? Yeah, so they're taking this kind of as a rebranding process and uh, reimagining and trying to redefine themselves and starting all over again. So, um, and they've changed drastically. They've changed musical direction just because they're different. They're in a different point in their life. So, um, but it's going really good. You know, they still have their uh, endorsement contracts and everything. And, the, but you know, also from the time that they had those Disney and Sony offers, I mean, the music industry has changed so much and it keeps evolving, especially with, you know, especially with social media and how um, musicians have to uh, actually be ready to be their own marketing department and manager. So they're going to really pursue stuff uh, independently. And they, they're really happy and excited about that. They don't want to be signed to a label. Yeah. And that comes from interacting with some other artists that they've met, like, you know, at the NAMM show in Los Angeles and talking to people who are touring. Yeah. They want to just be their own thing and be in charge of it. Now, Mark, how fun and special and special is, is it for you to be a guest performer with Close the Distance at times? <laughs> uh, I think you've been there sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> of course. You rock. Oh my Mark. gosh, I look like in pain right there. Okay, so <laughs> like somebody stepped on my foot. Okay, uh, um, no, it's a lot of fun. But you know, when they were younger, it was kind of a cool. You know, they, they wanted me to do it. Now it's very seldom. You know, they'll ask me if it's for an emergency or something. But um, you know, I have fun going up there. But they 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 kind of like, oh, Dad, do you have to be on stage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you kind of look older, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have fun. You know, I go for a song or two and stuff, but that's about all I can handle too. Because man, I can't keep up with them. You know, I'm I'm old as it is already. Well, you know, the the special thing is, I think when the when people in the audience are watching it, I mean, it it really looks like it's special for them. You know, having you on there too, and Mark, I wanna I wanna talk to you about my book Beyond the Lines. You know, in my book, I talk a lot about creating a superior culture of excellence. And when I come into your studio in Pearl City, I mean, you really have a great culture um, in your studio with with everybody, with your with your team of employees and your students. I mean, why is that? I think we try and make it. You now you have to make it feel like a family. Yeah, not just the staff but you're, the people you're servicing too, uh, the people you're working with. Um, and when you get down to, you know, everything, everything is really interaction, um, no matter who you are, which way you're going internally or externally in your business. So when people come in, I want them to feel like, you know, we're just one big happy family and we're going for one common goal. And in the end, what's really happening is we're all enjoying ourselves, achieving that goal and uh, on that journey to achieve uh, success. I get that, I and I feel that, and everyone that comes in there will have that same feeling uh, as well. And 
I want to ask you too, Mark, I mean, you're, you're a great music coach. A lot of people that know you, they know how extraordinary you are. And I want to know when you're working with someone or when you have your staff of amazing musicians working with someone, what do you focus on? You know, I think the thing that sets us apart from everybody else in, in the regular, you know, traditional type of approach to music lessons is we try and get to know the student, know that, you know, what they feel strongly about, what their desires are, find their superpower, and then try and bring that out rather than say, here, you know, this, uh, do this and do it that way. And, you know, who, who wants, who wants to, something just shoved at them and, and, and done mechanically, you know? So if you can uh, achieve that bond, get that communication and rapport going and really know who you're working with, then you can pull out the best from them and achieve excellence. I love that you mentioned that about really trying to focus on what they want to achieve. I mean, what, what is it that they want to improve on? And, you know, I'm a coach, you're a coach because we're, we're all coaching, you know, people or students in our, in our ways, but those are the common threads now. And you mentioned about communication, how important that is. How, how do you connect with such a wide range of students and personalities? I'm telling you that that's really tough, you know, especially for me and the staff, because I mean, we could be working with a five-year-old and then the next lesson we jump into, it's a teenager. And then for me, cause I'm the one that does adults, you know, I might go in and switch and then I'm with a senior citizen. Yeah. So it's boom, boom, boom. So again, yeah, the, the thing that you have to do is make that connection and really get that relationship going. So you know who you're working with, you know, um, well, um, what their, their drives are, what their passions are. Also what, you know, what, what they're worried about. Sometimes they, they have fears and phobias and you have to talk through them. And you know, being a coach and uh, instructor, it's the same thing. Sometimes you're a psychologist too. Yeah, that's <laughs> <Right>? for sure. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> now, Mark, I also know that, you know, whether when when people learn guitar or keyboards or drums, for example, there's certain personal and health benefits. What are some of those things? Um, yeah, people don't seem to realize. It. I mean, indirectly. I mean, when you're playing an instrument, of course you're getting physical movements. Or of course you're exercising muscles, fine motor skills, gross motor skills, but your brain especially. I mean, the way that you approach the music, if, and again, the way you teach it is the way someone will absorb it and apply it. And that's really important because if you're doing it the right way, it ties right back. It's just another subject of education. And I think we have to, okay, I don't want to get in a soapbox, but I'm just saying education as a whole, as a society, I think we have to rethink it because what we should be stressing is creativity, imagination and being driven by passion. And those are all parts of not just the arts and the humanities. I mean, math and science, you know, those things can, uh, language arts, those things have their own beauty in the way they're shaped and everything. But sometimes we, we lose sight of that. We just get caught up in the details and the facts and then just getting the right answer. But if we, if we tie it into actually creating something and achieving something that we um, we need ourselves you know there's something rewarding about that for everybody i love hearing that and what you said right there you basically said it's all about going beyond the lines mark <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, did. I think I did. You, you just did <laughs> now mark who who are some musicians that your students uh are really inspired by when they come to learn you know music from you that's interesting because I mean, you know, the, the typical things you, people are expecting, you know, oh, they love Taylor Swift, right? Or uh, they like the Jonas Brothers and things. But it, it really, when we get really surprised when they come in and they say like uh, somebody from the 70s or even the 60s or the 80s, and it's like, how, how do you know who that is? You know, and that never, they say, oh, because our parents listen to KSK. <laughs> and we're driving to school in the car. But um but then we discover that they're actually listening. They're really listening to the music and they notice things and 
they'll say, oh, I like the way this person plays. And because we're in this age where we have technology and we have video, we just don't have, you know, the radio. We can, they can watch YouTube. They really, really key on some of their personality traits and the way they move on stage. And uh, that's a big uh, uh, factor of uh, being inspired too with young students. Do you believe that anyone and everyone could become a great musician? Well, I do, but you know, the thing is, it depends, it, it not depends, but it's all, sometimes people make a mistake about how they define great. Yeah. You know, you're a great musician if you achieve your goal and you enjoy doing it. Yeah. You know, so everybody has the ability. Music is a human thing. Everybody can do music. I, I can't tell you how many adults, especially, they come in, they tell me, oh, I'm tone deaf. I don't have rhythm. It's like, no, you can't. That's impossible. You're a human being. You have those qualities, those, those traits. But as we get older, unfortunately, we get taught to actually ignore those things and we lose connection with them. So here at the school, we try and help them reconnect with that stuff and discover that no, it's there. We're just going to bring it out. Oh, I love how you guys are bringing it out like that because... You know, some people, before they come into you, they might have a preconceived notion of their capabilities. But what you're doing is you're really showing them that, hey, you're capable of doing so much more. Yes, yes, so much more. I think you even sang Def Leppard on your birthday on stage, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> I tried singing Def Leppard with MK. <laughs> and we have pictures uh, to prove it, so. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Let's keep that private, okay? <laughs> now, Mark, what's a, what's a future goal of yours? Because, you know, you've accomplished so much already. You've impacted so many people. Uh, but what's a future goal of yours right now? Um, I really want to stretch out, especially um, online. I want to do, and I want to reach out, not just as my own business, but I'd like to do it in such a way so I can connect with the schools and offer um, a curriculum out to the schools because you know, music and the arts and that's being taken out. It's just, they're not doing it. And it's like, uh, people are saying, well, how can you teach music o online? And it's like new technology. Um, the computer is actually a musical instrument. If you use it correctly, you can still be very musical. There's a, there's a lot of ways to abuse it and, and uh, do it more like Lego blocks. And, you know, you're just kind of piecing things together. But um, I want to reach out and do something where we can do music production with the schools, online courses, and then the schools and the, the kids from different schools and different islands can interact and collaborate with each other because it's online and uh, write music together and even write music to video or write music for their history or reports or something, something like that. And just get everybody connected to one big music, music community. I love that as a goal. Let's, let's help make that a, a reality, okay, Mark? Yeah, I want to network some with some people, get that happening. For sure. And Mark, I want to thank you for joining me on the TV show today and really thank you for sharing your insights. Oh, thanks for having me, Rusty, anytime. And let's get together too. Sure. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. And a special thank you to my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my book is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Mark and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.